What is going on, guys, and welcome back to Touchdowns to Home Runs. My name is Bernie. Thank you for joining us today on the Touchdowns to Home Runs show. Hope that your day is going absolutely fantastic. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Toronto Raptors, and I'll be giving you four different things that I think the Raptors can do in this offseason in order to put themselves in a really good position to return to the playoffs next year. Um, at the time of me filming this video, the Raptors currently have a record of 27-42 and 42 after their 115-96 loss last night to the LA Clippers, um, and then also, of course, two nights ago they were officially eliminated from playoff contention um, after the Indiana Pacers won which means the Raptors will be missing the playoffs for the first time in eight years but I mean there's a lot to be looking forward to I think for the Toronto Raptors um Got a really good young core, of course, but obviously this year when you miss the play-in games as well, you're already securing yourself a very high pick, but obviously the Raptors, of course, obviously in that lottery have a chance to move up. Um, just before we do actually get into the four main points, obviously you still got a main core, Ananobi, Siakam, Flynn, Fred Van Vliet, Gary Trent Jr. It is mainly guards and forwards. Um, but I think, again, a lot of young, talented, really good pieces, um, both in the starting lineup and just for depth as well. I think, you know, looking forward, the Raptors, um, even though they're losing Lowry and some other pieces, as we'll talk about in just a second, um, they got a really good base and foundation to sort of start off. Um, but the first one, of course, is figure out Kyle Lowry. Now, I don't think the Raptors are going to re-sign Lowry and keep him for the year, but I do think a sign-and-trade option is definitely on the table. Now, the Raptors, of course, chose not to move um, Lowry at the trade deadline. They wanted to hold firm on that value, chose um, we don't want to give him up. We want to keep him on for the rest of the year and see what we could do potentially in the offseason. Um, but the sign and trade option definitely on the table um, would allow the Raptors to obviously sign Lowry but still get some assets back for him. Could add potentially a center, which they definitely need, maybe another starting point guard depth at the point guard position for next year, um, because they would have plenty of suitors for him, so you'd assume they do get a big package, we're looking at teams like the 76ers, the Heat, maybe the Lakers, all teams who were sort of thought to be pushing for Lowry at the trade deadline, but didn't end up getting him, and teams that could use just some veteran experience at the point guard position, um, to potentially make another championship run for, the, for either of these teams, um, next year also helps these other teams out with some cap space um so i think it works out for a lot of different teams here um so this tr sign and trade option definitely on the table for the toronto raptors um, that being said, kind of leads us into our second point here, which is the Raptors, I think, still need to get another point guard. Now, Lowry is not in sort of the future and the way that the Raptors are building their core, but he still did have a lot of contribution for the Raptors. He's a gritty, experienced point guard, plays pretty good on both sides of the basketball, can score when he needs to, facilitate the basketball. Um, so the Raptors do have a bit of a void that they still got to fill. Now, they do have a few options on the roster. You could go Fred Van Vliet, um, but I think, honestly, it's better suited if they just leave him at shooting guard. Um, Malachi Flynn has played pretty good down the stretch as well. Um, he was good in college. Seems like he's sort, sort of starting to figure, figure it out at the NBA level, but he's still young and experienced. I say you give him another year, you still use him as your backup point guard. Um, so that being said, I really think the Raptors should look at getting a veteran quality point guard to fill this void. And there are a few different free agency options here for the Raptors. Um, guys like Devontae Graham, Dennis Schroeder, Spencer Dinwiddie, um, all guys that I think the Raptors should look at. You're looking at a guy like Dennis Schroeder, who's really done a very solid job leading the Lakers this year. You know, you look at that team, have LeBron, have Anthony Davis, but I think Schroeder is really one of the backbones of this team. Um, he stepped up in terms of sort of scoring. He's obviously that veteran presence. I think the Raptors could really use him. Dinwiddie as well had some really good years for the Brooklyn Nets, so um, I think the Raptors should be looking there. You put one of those guys as your starting point guard um Fred Van Vliet as your shooting guard then you got Flynn and Harris as your backup point guard and shooting guard as well I think it works out really nicely for the Raptors um number three probably one I know that a lot of people are talking about as well what do the Raptors do at center um, well, you got to find a way to add sort of a high value center, I think, um, especially offensively at that position. Um, right now, you got Kem Birch. Um, nothing wrong with Kem Birch. I do think he will come back to the Raptors. Um, really done a good job making sort of an instant impact. Um, really offensively and defensively. Um, but when you really look at the structure of the Raptors, I mean, Ken Birch is fine as a backup center, um, but he's not the guy that you're going to be winning championships or making it really, really deep into the East with, in my opinion. Um, so that being said, 
I think the Raptors definitely need some help at center. Now, you got some options in free agency. Um, I know a trade possibility is potentially an option as well. I know a lot of people are looking to the draft as well. Only problem with the draft um, is it's risky. The only guy who's a center who really falls into the Raptors' range is Kai Jones. But even Kai Jones is only six foot eleven, so a bit undersized at the center position. And as we'll talk about in just a second, sort of a project as well for the Raptors. So I think you know you need a guy, um, maybe like Holmes, who's a free agent. Um, Harrell's a free agent as well. Just some veteran, okay, sort of just decent players. Um, just to give the Raptors maybe some easy buckets um, who can give them a little more value, I think, on the offensive side and the defensive side of the basketball. Um, but yeah, the Raptors definitely do have some options. I just hope they end up picking right, picking, um, you know, just a real veteran center to add on to sort of the other guys who are going to be um, not only developing, but also sort of a younger core as well. Um, and then the fourth point that we have here, don't mess up the draft. Now, obviously, as I was saying before, Raptors missed out on even the play-in games, which means you're picking inside the top eight with the potential to move up into some real, real good pieces. Um, but let's say, theoretically, the Raptors do stay right around this 7-8 range, um, which is fairly likely. Um, you know, you're going to have a few options. And I just want the Raptors to pick the best player available. It's really, really hard to look at this Raptors roster right now and say, well, Kai Jones has to be that guy because he's a center. But as I was saying before, he scored under nine points last year for Texas. And even though that was a big statistical jump for him, he's a project. And I don't want the Raptors to draft any pros projects, which means, you know, even if you draft a little back, you probably want to stay away from a guy like Scotty Barnes, maybe a guy like Franz Wagner as well, even though I'm a big Franz Wagner believer. Um, but guys around that range, we're looking at guys maybe like Moses Moody, Keon Johnson, who are, you know, guard and, and forward respectively, um, who don't necessarily fit on paper into what the Raptors want to do. But I still think, and I say this really with all the drafts, not only in NBA, not only this year, particularly with the Raptors, but you got to pick the best player available. I think that's just what makes the most sense right now for the Raptors. Um, there are some centers later. I know there's some nice, like, sort of sleeper centers in possibly the second round, or if the Raptors do end up trading back or getting another pick later on in the first round that are some options but if the Raptors are picking at 7-8 which I really really hope they do keep that pick um, I think you know it's gonna have to end up being a guard or a forward I just hope the Raptors pick the best guy available um, but anyways guys obviously a lot to discuss here um, let me know your thoughts your comments your predictions with the Raptors and everything that I sort of discussed in this video let me know your thoughts on those down in the comment section below um, but if you did enjoy today's video make sure to leave a thumbs up subscribe to touchdowns to home runs for more content just like this um, I'm trying to do as much Raptors and NBA content leading up to the NBA draft as I possibly can and throughout the entire NBA offseason so if this is something that you like definitely make sure to stick around but as always guys thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again next time